And I am the devil. You can't say he doesn't give him a fair shot. Two free punches before he starts Batmaning this guy's face? Christopher Nolan sets up the tone and realism this film will carry right in this first fight. Bruce isn't a totally invincible warrior. He's just a really determined fighter with a super strong will. If you devote yourself to an ideal, then you become something else entirely. This movie isn't without important phrases or lacking in meaningful speeches. But this one from Liam Neeson kicks off the movie and origin story in a really strong way. I don't know what slash who to praise more, the ridiculously beautiful landscapes, which would be the location scouts, or the amazing cinematography and the way everything is shot, which would be Wally Pfister, the director of photography. Let's call it a tie. Even in quick transitions to get Bruce to his destination, we're pulled in by Pfister's cinematography again, and Zimmer's, and actually from what I understand, for the softer moments, Last Airbender composer himself, James Newton Howard's amazing score. And never has a live action Batman earned it quite like this. This is not a dance. I'd still take the dance compliments. You know, if you'd never stolen that rock, you never would have fallen down that well and never become Batman. So really theft win? So we build a new cheap public transportation system to unite the city. We don't usually get to see much of Thomas Wayne before his death. Showing him to be so philanthropic goes a long way in building Bruce's character and punctuates the cause of his death. I guess I can't blame Bruce's parents for trying exposure therapy. Flooding has been known to work. Also, this is an opera called Mephistophele which is about a man trying to use the devil's help to get what he wants, i.e. Bruce and Roz. Being a compassionate father. What's wrong, Bruce? No, no, it, it was me. I just needed some fresh air. And covering for your son. That's fine. Just take it easy. All right, everyone. Chill. How have I not done a movie with Gary Oldman yet? Gary Oldman is always a win. What a weird cast for Roy Batty. I mean, he's great for sure, just so reserved. I wonder if Rutger will have a cameo in 2049. <laughs> Batty. It was him, and him alone. Well, Alfred, that could make a young boy want to murder someone. Still, he doesn't need the guilt. My anger outweighs my guilt. Oh, never mind. Love the beginnings of these armed guards he eventually adopts in his Batman suit. So much of what he becomes is because of this training. <laughs> Christian Bale's workout routine. Theatricality and deception are powerful agents. You must become more than just a man in the mind of your opponent. You have sacrificed sure footing for a killing stroke. Ice water lessons. My great love, she was taken from me. Taken from you, you say? I'd heard that you had a very particular set of skills. Sure, I was desperate, like a lot of people back then, but they don't change what I did. Uh, remorse. Hey, Joe, is high. Not too often the sacrificial assassin slash pawn is a woman. Yay, equality? And the real reason Katie was replaced by Maggie. She doesn't know how to pull her punches. I wouldn't have a second's hesitation in blowing your head off right here and right now in front of him. Gotta give it up to Tom Wilkinson. He's as organized crime boss as you can be without being goofy and still threatening and realistic. Man, even the extras are played by respected actors. The doctor from MI2, Russian general in first class, some guy I don't remember in Harry Potter. I'm not sure if this is something that ever came up in the comics, but if not, this life of crime in the streets is a great addition to Batman's backstory. Gives him an easy way to empathize with those he often has to fight. First time I stole so that I wouldn't starve. I lost many assumptions about the simple nature of right and wrong. Train deception shadowing? On a couple levels. Not only does he trick Ra's al Ghul again, but the same hallucinogen is in the air. This final test set piece is also just so much fun. Solidifying the misdirection of who Ra's al Ghul is, it was a smart move to have them have this boss battle showdown like this. Saving your future enemy who unfortunately tricked you. Well, there goes Bruce Wayne's pitching career, but still saving your buddy again. Although he may have a future in competitive arm wrestling. You look very fashionable. Compliments. You think about Rachel? Actually, sir, I was thinking to myself. And honesty. And you can borrow the rose if you like. And generosity. The work offered by organized crime must have an attraction to the insane. Haha, <laughs> just, oh, what a layered statement. Killian Murphy is always a win. This is one of the best setups for the need of an incorruptible symbol of justice. Bad guys are running the place and own the entire justice, legal, and enforcement systems. Some other slash same bad guys want to sack the city, and anyone who is willing to stand up and do something is either too scared or would eventually wind up dead. First, gross. But second, and more importantly, awesome. Even though the League of Shadows ended up being the opposite of what Bruce stood for, he still kept the lessons he learned about fear, and this is a very important overcoming moment for him. One of the hardest parts of selling a Batman story is where did all his gear come from and why did none of the engineers, scientists, architects, all the way down to construction workers on the Batcave blow the whistle? For Nolan Verse, this is the first step. All prototypes, not in production, on any level whatsoever. Everything buried in a basement with one man overseeing it. And he's as noble and scorned as Morgan Freeman ever is. You're just one man. Now we're two. 
still gives me chills. And that's why he needs a cape. Even the bad ears have a functional purpose to hide the antenna. Some might say that this quick cutting craziness is a little annoying and I don't totally disagree. However, that's kind of the point. We're being introduced to Batman through the eyes of the goons, his victims if you will. This movie is all about fear, so the goal was to make him frightening, and all Falcone sees is a dark figure moving really fast kicking the crap out of a bunch of guys at once. WHERE ARE YOU?! Here. Yep. I'm Batman. And also yep. One of a turn to it anyway. Apt choice of words. Well, chain him to it I guess. The score. I don't really need to explain, right? I will anyway. This trilogy has a way of holding notes to create this swell that turns normal transitions into the most epic transitions and makes Batman doing his best gargoyle impression even more impressive. That's your nocturnal. Zoology lessons. I love that Gordon is so cautious about looking directly at Batman he averts his eyes at first out of respect, maybe a little fear. I swear to God. Swear to me! The other kids won't believe me. That's alright, just shoot them with a crossbow. That seems to convince people. What do you mean I pronounced kill wrong? You look like a man who takes himself too seriously. Man, all of Batman's main villains have some real issues with seriousness. You need to lighten up. And a lot of them enjoy good fun. I've felt these effects before. I can hear everyone's hindsight yelling, then why didn't you figure it out? Because Roz was dead and the League of Shadows destroyed. He had no reason to suspect that Roz Aaron boy would try to come back, especially after Bruce saved his life. There's something I think you should see. Oh, Rachel, no matter who's playing you, you just suck at detecting danger, don't you? Perhaps you should have some. Clear your head. Who else wants a Killian Murphy Scarecrow origin movie? He's here. Who? The Batman. And this is one of the many reasons why he's always a win. Make Spawn look cuddly. Green isn't here right now. But if you'd like to make an appointment. <laughs> Batman almost gave Jason Bourne stare descent to run for its money. Almost. As far as car chases go, adding the tumbler is always gonna get you points from me. And rooftop travel can never hurt. Also, this is the most believable version of the Batmobile for indestructibility. Why haven't we felt the effects? Must be a compound that has to be absorbed through the lungs. Well, thank goodness no one made microwave oatmeal or coffee or cooked with water at all. Just kidding. Based on the complete vaporization of the water supply at the end and no one succumbing to the effects the way that Rachel does from her concentrated dose, it's easy to say that small amounts of vapor created from household activities wouldn't be enough to be an issue. It's not just your name, sir. It's your father's name. And it's all that's left of him. Pretty much goes without saying that Michael Caine is an amazing actor, but he really brought a life and emotional level to Alfred that we hadn't really seen before. Please go. Stop smiling. It's not a joke. Please leave. So maybe there were better ways to get everyone out of his house that didn't alienate people. But two things. No offense to the billionaires in my audience, but this plays very well into his playboy superiority persona that he's trying to cultivate that makes it all the more of a stretch for people to connect him with Batman. You can't be a benevolent host and then be surprised when people start asking questions. Much like his earlier dismissal of Guy dresses up like a bat, clearly has issues. <laughs> and second, cultivating this persona would ultimately only endear him to these people who respect snobbery. Also bravo for that instant fake drunk facade. All you phonies. All you... <laughs> Two-faced friends. To be fair, you haven't met a true two-faced friend yet, Bruce. This toxin is derived from the organic compound found in our blue flowers. Even though the greatest detective in the world should have put it all together a little quicker, I do love that no part of the story is really a B-plot. Everything connects in the end. What is the point of all those push-ups if you can't even lift a bloody log? And you thought the worst burn in this house would be from the fire. <laughs> Still a better outcome for Bobby than what August March's crew did to him. And that's the face of a young boy destined to be king, realizing, yeah, people screaming in terror is pretty great. Hmm. What I do, that defines me. Bruce? Wouldn't be a superhero movie without the superhero revealing his identity to pretty much anyone who asks. There needed to be at least one really Batman-y set piece in this film, you know? And what better way to accomplish that than hanging off a train like a crazy person? <laughs> Familiar, don't you have anything new? How about this? Going forward in the trilogy, Nolan extended his fight scene cuts, but even this one is better than some of the previous. Really showing off the usefulness of the KC fighting style. Batman should just feel lucky that Qui-Gon doesn't have his lightsaber with him. Can't stop this train. Consider anything about stopping it. See, remember he got Roz focused on that wound just the way the train is unstoppable when he had a trick up his sleeve all along. It all connects, man. It all connects. One thing I really love about this movie is the respect it has for Roz. Usually as a villain is meeting his demise, he screams like a wuss and covers his face but Roz closes his eyes and accepts his fate like a true ninja. Yep. I 
did terrible things. I mean, you also slapped me in the face twice. But yeah, let's focus on the words. Love. Leaves a calling card. Setting up Heath Ledger's Joker is a definite win. First and foremost, this is a quality film with a well-told story, strong characters, and a very solid and well-fleshed-out message and theme. Replace Batman with any generic billionaire genius detective who dresses up like an animal and it would still be an amazing film. Copyright infringing, but still amazing. And that should be the goal of every superhero movie, to be a good film first. It's not always the case, but Christopher Nolan proved it can be done. And then it was also a spectacular Batman film that paid respect to the character while maintaining an almost ridiculous amount of realism, or at its worst, the illusion of realism within the confines of a fictional world. This Batman Begins origin story is a giant hodgepodge of bits and pieces of other Batman origin stories. But Nolan and Goyer pulled all those pieces together into a coherent, realistic story. They gave us as close to a real-world look at what it would take to create the Batman we love. And a good hour of this film was devoted to just that. Strangely, there weren't a ton of things to pinpoint about that first hour. It's how everything works together to build such a strong foundation for this story going forward. We care about Batman before he's even considered donning the cowl. Bruce coming to the realization he could never affect change without truly understanding what he yearned to change understanding through experience, and then being recruited and trained by the very organization his ideals would force him to fight against. Amazingly, so many of the lessons that make Bruce a good Batman are learned from enemies, villains, and tragedy. Chill inspires him to put himself in the shoes of a criminal, Falcone is the one that teaches Bruce that real power comes through fear, and then the majority of his physical training comes from Roz and the League of Shadows. And he pretty much does the opposite of whatever Roz says about things like compassion, mercy, and hope for the future. But the main theme of this film is fear. It's the impetus for almost every poignant moment in Bruce's life, starting with his father's dying words, Don't be afraid. which both creates a huge sense of guilt over their death since his fear is what forced them into the circumstances leading to the Wayne's deaths, and spurs him onward, learning he should be afraid when he isn't, learning to embrace fear to use it, and ultimately becoming fear to protect the fearful. I can't say enough about the cast. Every important role was filled perfectly, and it's exciting to go back to the beginning like this and see not only Bruce, but Christian Bale really transform into the iconic character. Though it all seems so clear in hindsight now, the red herring casting of Ken Watanabe as Roz made Liam Neeson's reveal all the more powerful. And I love that there are repercussions to Bruce's compassion. It's not cut and dry that mercy is a victimless virtue and gives meaning and depth to all his decisions going forward. Michael Caine and Morgan Freeman kill it as usual, and Gary Oldman can literally do no wrong, even as Zorg and especially as Sid Vicious. Only time will tell now if Batfleck's solo film can live up to this trilogy. If it ever gets made, that is. What? He's not directing anymore? Great, I'm sure that has nothing to do with this statement months ago about not making this movie if there wasn't a good enough script. Great. Come on, guys. I believe in you, WB. At least we'll always have this movie. You should see another one. Why do we fall, Bruce? Why do we fall? Why do we fall, sir? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. Didn't you get the memo? Didn't you get the memo? It's not who you are underneath. It's not who I am underneath. It's what you do that defines you. But what I do that defines me. 